Hello. Today is the last of our messages in our summer sermon series, which we have called Faith at the Movies. Each week we have looked at a film and put it in dialogue with scripture. Today we're going to be looking at the film The Holdovers. And the clip I'll be using is from the end of the movie. It occurs after Mr. Hunnam and Angus Tully and Mary have spent two weeks together over the Christmas break. It had a very, very rocky start, but towards the end, they have come to share their vulnerabilities and their disappointments in life and begin to appreciate each other. So if you'd like, you can put me on pause, click on the link below to watch the clip and then join me on the other side. So as you may have gathered, it was Angus's idea to go visit his father who was not dead, but instead was mentally ill. And he tried to sneak away in a cab, but Mr. Hunnam caught up with him and the two of them went together. What I love about this clip is the way that Mr. Hunnam builds up Angus's character in the eyes of his mother. When he tells her that Angus has incredible potential, it's as if she is hearing that for the very first time. I don't think she has realized that before in her life. But what I love even more about this clip is the way they look at each other with eyes of compassion You see, in these two weeks, they have shared their lives with one another. They have been compassionate towards one another. They have learned to really get to know one another, and they have come to carry one another's burdens. It's a look of truly knowing who the other person is deep inside. And what I love even more is when Mr. Hunnam points to his eye, because you see, on the trip to Boston, Angus had asked him, if I'm going to look at you, which eye do I look at? And Mr. Hunnam refused to reply to that. But in this clip, when he points to it, it's as if he is saying, we truly see each other. We truly and genuinely know one another now. And that leads us to our scripture text for today, which is from Philippians chapter 2. If there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, But in humility, regard one another as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. There's a word in the Greek New Testament, all alone, which is a single word, but we uh, have to take two words in English to translate it. And that word is one another. And perhaps the best way to depict this, it is, it is not for one another, not one with one another, not one against another, but it's this unique reciprocal pronoun that requires two or more people to be in a mutually supportive relationship with each other. The Apostle Paul uses this small word a lot in his letters to the early churches. And after he has presented his case about the offer in Christ to a new life for anyone who has faith, Paul often turns to the implications for being in Christian community, how we should live with each other, how we should be with other, how we should relate to each other. Let me just give you a few examples, all of which I think were demonstrated in this film. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. 
live in harmony with one another, outdo one another in showing honor, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you, encourage one another and build up each other. These are Paul's guidelines for living in Christian community, but we can only do these things if we are in each other's lives, if we know each other, if we share time together, if we share our burdens and our vulnerabilities with each other. You see, in the end, Mr. Hunnam sacrifices his own job. He is fired by the headmaster for accepting responsibility for that trip to Boston. It's the opposite of acting out of selfish ambition. Do you remember when I said he told the headmaster that our one true purpose is to produce young men of good character? His selfless act does just that. He builds up Angus in Angus's own mind, as well as in the mind of his mother and the headmaster. Paul writes, in humility, regard one another as better than yourselves. Do you hear how countercultural that is? Humility was not a virtue in the Roman Empire, nor is it in our culture today. We celebrate heroes who are rugged, self-made, independent individuals. But when we experience life in Christian community, we learn to one another with those who share this community with us. We help each other not because one is superior and one is inferior, but because we see Christ in each other. I need help from you just as you need help from me. You encourage me, I encourage you. You lift me up, I lift you up. I carry your burdens and you carry mine. In this, we show the way of Jesus as we live out our lives together. I took a class in theology and film from Rob Johnston at Fuller Seminary, and he told us that if you can't watch the first five minutes of a film, you shouldn't even bother watching the rest of it. Because in those first five minutes, really important things are set up. Among the very first words in this film are these. In the beginning was the word. Remember, it was a Christmas break movie. And that's a great segue into our, the rest of our text for this morning, because in it we see that Jesus demonstrates humility and a willingness to carry our burdens as he takes on human form and dies on the cross to show us the path of love. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God high, exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, the life of God is a life of communion and belonging between the Creator, the Son, and the Spirit. It's a giving and receiving of love to one another. And we're incorporated into that relationship through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Therefore, our life together is a communion of belonging with God and a belonging to one another here in this community of faith. We invite you to get to know our community better. You can do that by exploring our YouTube channel. 
and do hit subscribe and check notifications so we can send you any future updates. You can also explore our community of faith at the church website, lopc.org. And we hope you know there's always a place for you here.